We just did something crazy. Totally crazy. He's crazy, Bucky. This is his emoji. He's very happy with yes. it. He had a big day at doggy daycare, so he's yes. He's a little needy right now. Like Canada can be spontaneous, but it's it's more on like a small scale. Yes. We did something spontaneous on a large scale. Yes, a very large scale. So. It's Saturday. So I just got a text from one of my best friends that I've known for over 30 years. And uh, we went to grade school together. We went to kindergarten together. And it was crazy because I was just thinking about him. I was cleaning the kitchen, listening to Aerosmith. We went to the Pearl Jam concert. If you saw our Bethany Mides vlog on Chicago, he was one of the guys that I went to the Pearl Jam concert with. And we had so much fun. We were like, oh, Aerosmith's gonna come into town next year. So maybe we should uh, go to Aerosmith together. Aerosmith, unfortunately, is no longer gonna tour anymore. Steven Tyler like blew out his vocal cords and, and then he tried to come back and he couldn't and come back, so I think he's like officially retired. That was a bummer. But anyways, so I got a text from him. First was dating time. The second one was like a bunch of emojis. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I think he's talking about the Cubs game. It's like, does he want me to go to the Cubs game? But it was a TV set. I think he said, watch the Cubs game. And then he said how nervous he was. And I realized, I'm just like, I looked at it again, like first, holy crap, he's throwing out the first pitch at Wrigley Field. Yeah, I talked to him and I, I, how it happened and why didn't he let me know sooner? I, I totally would have come out. He said that he found out the night before this was gonna happen. And he's like, I've been practicing and it's terrible. Terrible. And yeah, I told Bethany and we're we're thinking about going out there. We are we're gonna make a plan. It is Saturday when I found out. The game is Monday. We live in Los Angeles or you know, an hour outside of Los Angeles. The game's Monday night. So we gotta try to figure out getting the dogs, daycare, booking flights, getting a hotel, getting tickets to the game. I told my friend, like, this isn't just a once in a lifetime experience. This is once in, you know, a lifetime experience that not everyone even gets to experience. So this is once in a few lifetimes, in a very select amount of lifetimes. I mean, even if you think that one person, usually it's like celebrities that throw out the first pitch or like, you know, presidents. So to do this, I mean, you have to think, if the Cubs have been around 100 years and there's like 80 home games. So in the history, there's only been 800 people that have thrown out the first pitch at Wrigley Field. This is a big deal and I want to go. Let's see if we can make it happen. Gavin's throwing out the first pitch of the Cubs game on Monday. I was like, whoa, that's amazing. So like, we got to go. I was like, <laughs> huh? You want to go to Chicago in like 48 hours? Yep. It's not as easy as just like, okay, let's just go. It's like there yeah. is some planning involved. It was also a heck of a time to be taking off of work for me personally for my day job because co-managing partner had just been out for a full week. And so Monday was supposed to be the day that I was going to be catching him up on everything, which is important. But how often does a friend throw out the first pitch at a Cubs game? Exactly. So step one, can we get the dogs into doggy daycare? Yep. I know, you're very excited. I know, I know, you wanna go. How about you, Bucky, do you wanna go? It's okay, it's not torture. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. There you go. I know, Foxy, I know, you're very excited. I just, I need your face, there we go. Good girl. Is Charlotte over here okay? Do they need food for today? Yes, please. And then their food is in here with the, the two like toys that we gave to each other. And there goes Roxy. Roxy. Over. All right, so that was probably the hardest part of yeah. the trip so far. Saying goodbye to our fur babies. 100%. Always the hardest part. Dropping them off at Bow Wow Bungalow. This is where they go and Bucky gets some training and they have their daycare. And we take them here kind of like every, every couple of weeks just so they can get used to the place. When we do go on trips, it's not like completely unfamiliar. Yeah. They're now there playing in the yard with the other dogs and that's it. Now, now the trip really begins. All right. Step number two, are there flights? So we're booking a red eye and the flight is leave uh, Los Angeles at 11.59 p.m. and arrive in Chicago at around 5.30, 6 a.m. Cubs game was at 6.20 p.m. She still had work to get back to and what was even actually more of a problem, she was going to see Hamilton the next night. I had tickets to take my mom to Hamilton. Yep, at the Pantages, which the last time she was going to go see Hamilton was during the pandemic. Right before uh, she was going to see it, the pandemic hit, COVID hit, all theaters are canceled. You know, they refunded the tickets or whatever, but sorry, you can't see it. She's waiting four years to see Hamilton. We arrived at O'Hare at 6 a.m. on Monday. We went back to O'Hare at 7 a.m. on Tuesday to catch our flight. That was a 9 a.m. flight back to L.A. So basically 24 hours in Chicago. All right, so here we are waiting for our ride to the airport. With awesome music. A heartbeat away. So uh, this is the shuttle. 
shuttle uh, bench, actually, which is kind of rickety. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit janky. Still supporting our weight, which is a good sign. And once again, it is a theme. <laughs> I will always forget a sweatshirt whenever I travel. You will. I guess I never travel in the winter in LA because I always just go out of the house without a sweatshirt. I'm like, fine. And then we got here. What did I fucking forget? Oh my God. I forgot a sweatshirt again. I'm going to have to buy another. This time I'm going to buy something, I guess, that says Los Angeles because I have two sweatshirts that say Chicago. One of them is fucking ugly as hell. I've never seen this sweatshirt since he wore it on a plane. <laughs> it has never resurfaced in our home. I honestly didn't know it still existed. Um, but yeah, so this is the sketchy parking lot that we're in. It looks a lot better now than the time that I dropped Ken off here at like four in the morning and no lights were on and there wasn't a soul to be seen. Um, yeah. He's like, yeah, no, it's cool. This is where you dropped me off. I was like, you yeah, know, I'm not dropping you off here. I told Bethany that I'd be okay here. I would not get murdered in the parking lot. I think I wouldn't have gotten murdered. I would have been fine. And I didn't, I was fine. Cause I sat here, I sat in the car. I was like, I'm not leaving you. That is why a murderer didn't come. I was like, oh, that chick in the car looks like she knows Kung Fu. Dude, I do, I'm a badass. Miyagi do. All right, so one step closer to Chicago and Wrigley Field and see my friend throw out the uh, first pitch of the Cubs game. Ah! Yeah. Ah, Hudson News. So we meet again. The Hudson News one. It did. And it's in a really pretty color, too, see? Yep. California. It's, the, it's California Republic. We just need, like, new on top. And then... Yeah, the oh, for the NCR. Exactly. Nice, yeah. Yeah. We got here and uh, we went to Rolling Stone. They interviewed us. They're going to cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, yeah, we totally are. We had dinner, which was chicken tenders. It was amazing. Which is dinner at, at 10 30 at night. Yes. Um, that's dinner. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Had a couple drinks and our flight's delayed, but we are, we are ready to go. This is going to be the craziest 24 hours ever. It's exactly 24 hours that we will be in Chicago. So, like, excluding the flight there and the flight back will be exactly 24 hours. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Here we are, Chicago! We made it! We made it. Uh, got very little sleep on the plane. Although we made it here in like record time. Seriously. Uh, the flight was late. It was like, uh, left like a half an hour late. And we got here. Almost half an hour early. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. Now we are waiting for the shuttle for our hotel. It's gonna be much longer. We were just gonna take a, a taxi there because we wanna get some sleep before we uh, see my family for lunch. And then, uh, you know, Cubs game tonight. <laughs> Game. Such a tired woohoo. It is, but it's there, and that's what counts. This is true. Hold for sound. Hold for sound. There's a plane by the airport. Okay, so we just got back from lunch with our family. It was nice that everyone was able to make it out on such short notice. Yeah, I mean, Ken and I, more like late morning, midday. Yeah, yeah was the first time that the thought of going to Chicago even even came up as, as a possibility. So the fact that we were able to pull off getting all of our ducks in a row enough to hop on a plane Sunday night, and then even more so that your family was able to mm -hmm. take time out of their Mondays and like get off of work and stuff to come meet us for lunch was pretty special and definitely something we were appreciative of. Yeah, it meant a lot. After lunch, my mom goes up to Bethany and gives her something, and I didn't know what it was. She just showed me in the car. I have a story about that, so, but why don't you tell me what my mom said, and then like we'll do it on, on camera, and then I'll tell you my story on that. So this is what she gave me. It is a charm bracelet and it has seven charms on it. One for Ken and each of his brothers. Um, I already figured out which one Ken is. He's the <laughs> one in the middle. The chain's got like little hearts on it. Your mom showed this to me and then she told me about the charms and then she said, we don't know each other all that well, which is Ken and I moved out to LA not long after we started yeah. dating. So have not had the chance to spend a lot of time sort of like on a one-on-one -on -one basis with his mom. And she's like, so I don't know if this will be your style. And, and if it's not like you can just melt it down, that's totally fine. And I I was like, oh my God, I would never. That is what she, she gave to me, which was just super sweet um, and definitely means a lot. So now I'm curious about the story. So uh, my mom had this charm. I saw it when I was like maybe five or six years old and I'm looking at it, reading all the names and everything. It only had six. I was not on it. I'm like, mom, why am I not on here? I don't know how long it took her. I think it took her a couple of years, but she did. Mine's, my charm is not the same. One, because I was born um, much later than my other brothers. I mean, my brother closest in age to me is four years older, but oldest brother is 20 years older than me. It's been a while. Um, so I think they had the same style. She eventually got it. That's why it's easier to tell who I am on it because it's uh, I'm different than, than everyone else's. So everybody else's is like a circle with a, a little baby face on it, but Ken is just the baby face. Yeah, just the baby. And he's in the middle, front and center. Yeah, exactly. There are a variety of reasons she gave that to you, so I thought that was really, really sweet and really meant a lot to me that my mom gave that to yeah, her. Yeah, it meant a lot to me as well. I was I was very surprised. What's funny is that we brought this out, uh, I'm like, oh, I'll tell you the story on camera so I can get your reaction on it. But like, as I was telling it, I got a little bit more emotional than I Aww. thought. 
<laughs> so. so far, a great start to the trip. And uh, my brother, my oldest brother, him and his wife, Catherine, are going to be going with us to the game, picking us up in a couple hours, and we'll be driving to Wrigley Field and see, him, see my friend throw out the first pitch. Like, everyone had the exact reaction that I thought they were going to do. Okay, good. Yeah, this is the proper response about how nuts <laughs> this is, how, like, absolutely insane that it is that my friend, again, who's not famous. Uh, my brother Dan goes, yeah, tomorrow, Olympic athletes like are throwing out the first pitch, like gold medalists. These are the types of people that, that throw out the first pitch, okay? Gold medalists, dang. Yeah, and it's not to say that my friend is not accomplished. He's a great lawyer, uh, managing partner at his, at his firm. He's accomplished a lot, but those people don't throw out the first pitch of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. these incredible seats like right behind home plate which was amazing like i never want to see a baseball game any other way now i really wanted behind home plate because i wanted to film him yeah. throwing the first pitch so i picked the third baseline and thank god i did because we get there i go right to our seats bethany and my sister-in-law go to uh, the bathroom and then they come back she's like oh yeah i saw gavin by the way Catherine and i come out of the ladies room we go to find our seats ken and joe aren't there but i see gavin and he looks nervous and he waves at me and i wave at him i I knew that his mom didn't know about this, mm -hmm. but I didn't know who his mom was. I never met her and I didn't know what she looked like. Woman who was a little bit older is like, oh, do you know him? <laughs> what if this is mom? And I was like, oh yeah, we're we're friends. We um we're just in town for a little bit. And because like she's chatting me up, turns out she was the usher. I didn't know that though, and I didn't want to risk spoiling the surprise for Gavin's mom. She had a oh. uniform and an ID badge and everything like that. She did not have an ID. <laughs> she had some cups pins though. I thought she was maybe sporty. I don't know. Once I, didn't I know knew this. she was the usher, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, by the way, he's throwing out the first pitch. Yeah. Gavin then was like, oh, come on over. And so I went over, I saw him, I saw his wife, we chatted for a bit. Meanwhile, Ken and Joe are still nowhere to be seen. I don't know how you even got there because I'm waiting at the top. I don't think they're gonna let me through if I don't show them the tickets. I don't know how you got like that far up there. Because we didn't so, have the tickets, only Ken yeah. had the tickets. And so I'm waiting up there for like to, for them to come through and they never come. Like all of a sudden, then I finally see them. She's like, oh yeah, I saw Gavin. You did not see Gavin. Like he's right there. And there he is. And then I got to talk to him beforehand. Yep. It was so cool. Um, to, to be there for him. He's like, oh yeah. I've been thrown like 60 pitches probably in the last like couple days and maybe like 10% of them were good. He's like, I don't know how this is gonna go. Just just soak it up, man. Have yeah. a good time. This is an amazing experience and just yeah. and just have fun with it. He was so nervous. It yeah. was so sweet. It was great. He made it over home plate. He did. He did a great pitch. Yeah. He checked the runner at first. So that was a great, that was a great little yeah. moment. Here we go. Yeah. This is it. Oh, there he is. That's him. Woo! Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! That was good. That was good. That's no fun. You did it too well. That would have been enough. But it was on top of that, great game. There was like yeah. some Cubs home runs. The Cubs won by a lot. They scored a lot of runs. And then like the last like three or four innings just flew by because it was just everyone was striking everyone out on, on both sides. But the Cubs were up by a lot that, at that point. So it didn't really matter. Uh, Wrigley Field was rocking. It and was. Got to uh, talk to them afterwards and talk to his mom who I haven't seen in like, like 15 years. And I finally um, met her so I would, would know the difference between her and an usher. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Took a taxi back to our, uh, our place. Had a drink at the hotel, went to bed, woke up, I don't know, six hours later to go to the airport and a flight back here. Yep. Okay, so we are back at the scene of the crime. Um, <laughs> we were here uh, 36 hours ago. So now it's two o'clock here um, on Tuesday. Back in California. Yeah, uh, I got a sweatshirt now. Left with zero, came back with two. Yes, I also got an oversized Wrigley Field shirt. So I was saying to Ken, as we were coming through O'Hare Airport to come back, I was like, how is it the only thing, quite honestly, the only singular thing I've added to this bag is one t-shirt, and yet it feels immensely more heavy. But you know, that's the thing, right? Of coming back, when you go, you've got all the adrenaline and the excitement to go, like things are a little bit easier, and then you're coming home and you're like, all right, I'm just ready to be home. Things yep. feel heavier, you're more tired. You're like, I'm just ready to be, be back. Hi, baby. Wait, hang on, hang on, okay. I was afraid you were gonna do this the hard way. <laughs> there we go. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
fucking no. And then saw Hamilton, which was fantastic. And I wound up staying awake. I was like a little bit afraid that with so little sleep over the, the course of like the three days, I would somehow like be struggling through the show, but it was a fantastic show. It was a complete success. We picked up our puppies on Wednesday morning from doggy daycare and they were very happy to see us, but they had a wonderful time there. They were very good, except that now he's crabby because he wants bedtime. Yes. But yeah, it was a once in a lifetime experience and it was amazing. We don't live a crazy extravagant, lifestyle. I mean, we don't really go out a lot. I'm perfectly happy with our life. I think it's great. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But, you know, we don't buy expensive clothes. We don't go out a ton. For us, it's like, okay, that allowed it for like when this opportunity arose and the flexibility, like, you know, being able to do this. YouTube for me was fine. I, you know, I'm just like, I checked in with my boss and I was like, yes, I can do this. <laughs> and uh, her boss uh, being so great, like, you know, I mean, letting her go yeah. as well. That was really nice. So really appreciated the flexibility that she had at her job as well. Yeah. Um, so like really fortunate with that, that we were able to go and support them. Cause I mean, even my friends that live in Chicago weren't able to go like see him like such last minute. And he sent me a text afterwards saying like, you know, how much it meant to like have us there and hear us cheering for him when he went out to throw the first pitch. Hell yeah. That's everything, that's, that's what it's about. Uh, so once in a lifetime experience, can't believe it happened. Can't believe we made it work. Cause as we said, this is not, this is so unlike us. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it again. So, you know, yeah. if any more of your friends want to throw opening pitches, I'm, I'm down. All right, we'll see. We'll see if that ever happens. <laughs> I know you're cranky. You were very vocal during that. <laughs>